All right, this video is to help with figuring out the length of material that you need to be able to calculate how much metal is needed for a ring. Okay, now this ring is cast, but what we're looking for is to establish the size of the ring you need so that it fits the proper finger. All right, so we started here. I've got a couple different pieces of stock material. This is copper. Uh, this is 14 gauge copper wire, and this is eight gauge. And I've, I've picked these two so that you can see the difference uh, as we do this. All right, some of the tools you're gonna need that we have in the studio, we've got this uh, thickness or gauge measurer, okay? And how it works is as you depress this, you can put material inside here okay so like let's measure the thickness of this ruler okay because if you line this up against a ruler it's not going to register much but if you put this inside those then it registers half a millimeter you see how that works so <clears throat> These are millimeters. Certainly these, you can't use a ruler. This is graduated or amplified. That thickness is represented over here bigger so that you can see the differences. Uh, this works with wire uh, in a pinch. That was not, no pun intended here. <laughs> um, you can put this here and it will register a little over three millimeters thick for eight gauge wire. And we'll check that here a little more accurately. 12 or the 14 gauge looks like it's about one and a half millimeters. Okay, that'll matter here in just a second. To figure out, so say I want to make a ring out of this wire and I want it to be, let's say, a nine and a half because that's the size of my right hand ring finger. You want to find one of these jeweler rulers and you need to have the ones that are a little wider. We have some smaller ones that are simply millimeters. Uh, these ones on the back uh, have what's called the ring shank portion. Okay, so this is as if you have a ring and you cut it and then straighten it out. How long does that material, how long is it, how much do you need to then be able to make it into a ring and have it be the intended size so it fits. Here we go. What I like to do, I like to use a pen, but really anything pencil works, okay? And what we're doing here is I like to make a line right here so that I can have a starting point. And this isn't super precise, but like I said, we're going to nine and a half, so there's nine, and here is my half. I like to make a little V so that I'm not worried about the thickness of my, my line here. Or, you know, a pencil would make an even bigger line, but where that notch is, the white there, is very precise. Now, what we're doing is we flip this over and we need to convert it to millimeters. So I line this up. Millimeters are certainly more accurate than uh, inches. I line this up and we're looking at about 61 millimeters for a nine and a half but here's where we run into a little bit of a hiccup as you may have noticed right here there's a note and that note says add 3x or three times the metal thickness to a ring we don't make bracelets because bracelets are uh, e more easily measured than with these and they use a lot of material so add 3x metal thickness to a ring awesome that's where the measurement parts come in now the other way we can measure is with these digital calipers these calipers are awesome how you adjust them this wheel right here turn it like this and it will open very precisely and close you can measure something on the inside here or you can measure the inside of something that's round in here <clears throat> If you need it to stay, say I want it to be, you know, right there, you can tighten that down just finger tight. You don't need to get a wrench and tighten it down. It's not gonna go anywhere, okay? So what we need to do is we need to measure the thickness of our wire. So if I were using 14 gauge wire, 
take this in here, 1.57, which is really close to what we got with the, with the smaller analog thing. I would round that to 1.5 because 1.5 can be uh, times by three very easily. Uh, <clears throat> and that would be four and a half uh, millimeters. Okay, so technically we would add for a ring to be nine and a half on size 14 gauge wire, we would then add uh, 4.5 millimeters to the 61 millimeters that we already have. Here's what my experience has lent me to do. I don't love going by three, 3x. I like to do two, and especially on smaller gauge wire like this, okay? Two to 2x, if we add three millimeters to this, that makes it 64 millimeters. And I can cut this, cut one end, so here's, this is a really important part. Cut one end flush, file it flat, and then measure from there, 64 millimeters. And that's easily done here. 64 millimeters, just like that. And I can cut just a little bit outside of here, file it flat down to the line, and I know how much I need for my ring shank and then I can bend it round, solder it to closed, and hammer it round. The reason why I do 2x instead of 3x is because there is usually some imperfections in the way we bend this metal, and metal usually has a little bit of stretch, so I want it to be just a little small so that when I put it on a mandrel and hammer it round, which I'll show you in a second, uh, it'll stretch and it will tighten out, tighten the ring and, and make it perfectly round. Works well. Let's do this eight gauge wire so that you can see the difference. So right here, we went to 64 millimeters right there. That's the number for 14. That says gauge. <laughs> and now let's do the eight gauge. Eight gauge, three, let's round down to three. Three times three would be nine millimeters. I think we'll do about seven, just to give it a little bit of a, of a snug uh, fit. So if we add seven, six is close. So we take our ruler and go from our 61 and add seven, which brings us all the way out here to 68. Significant difference in length. Both of these lengths from here to here in 14 gauge and from here, eight gauge, okay, will make the same size ring. Now that might be confusing, so let me explain a little further. This material, if we weren't to do this calculation right here, then the outside diameter of this ring would be the size nine and a half. And the inside would be much smaller. We want the ring to be on the outside of the size nine and a half or whatever size ring you're making, okay? <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and cut these and we will, I'll show you how we would bend them together. I'll show you uh, on, on this one how I'm going to bend it and we'll go from there. Okay, I have cut this now to 64 millimeters for the, the 14 gauge. Now I wanna show you these benders, these bending pliers. These have a material in here called Delrin. And it is a pliable, it's a little, it's a little softer. It's not meant to mar material or, or you know mess it up. Now what you can do, put these in here and you can slowly bend your material. You don't wanna to go too much too fast, okay? 
and it helps you get this kind of close, but that's all we're really looking for. Okay, I don't want to bend it too much. And we just want to get the ends of these wires together. A lot of times we get hung up in that these need to, this needs to be a perfect circle. That couldn't be further from the truth. So this just gets us close. We can take this, we can line up the ends here. with our fingers just like that we're almost there sometimes it takes a little fussing and that's okay There we go. I want you to see how particular I was to get those things lined up nice and straight. We don't want corners, circles, rings, circles don't have corners, so we don't want to have any corners. Now I can go pickle this and solder it. Okay, I moved locations because I want to show you a new tool. This tool is going to help with so here is my shank for the eight gauge wire ring I'm gonna make uh, to nine and a half. I've cut it to 68 millimeters and left enough that I could file the ends down to the appropriate 68. Now, here is the next tool. So here's the one I need to work on. And this little box right here has all the bits in it. These metal bits, okay, camera's walking off on me. Right here, I'm going to use about a 20 gauge or 20 millimeter uh, form here, and we want the 20 that matches the radius. So when I move this handle right here, it will compress down into there. I need to clamp this down, so I'm going to do that right now. Just like that, and. I'm going to show you with this one with heavier gauge metal it's much easier if it is annealed okay and I'm just going to work my way around here and I'm going to come through here and work from either end towards the middle okay and if you get to the end and it's certainly not quite tight enough switch it out and go to 18 and we can continue to pinch this down this will help us get it close all right now from here we can use hand tools to get those ends to be lined up so we'll go ahead and do that now okay I got this lined up. I had to use a hammer, some pliers. Uh, these parallel pliers that are in the toolbox are awesome. I uh, used those. But those are touching now. It's perfectly lined up. It's certainly not round, but that we will fix in a minute. This really cool tool, and I, I want you all to use it. Just make sure you put it away when you're done. Okay, I've got these soldered, and now... I, they're very much not round, which is unfortunate, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them on the mandrel, okay? And hit them with a rawhide mallet. Use a rawhide mallet so that you don't put a bunch of dents in the middle. I'll hammer this off camera because it's really loud. All right, hammering is all done. Make sure you're using a metal ring, uh, ring mandrel. I've got a couple that are meant for other things. Now, I've got these hammered. This one I've, I've, you know, believe it or not, tried to clean up a little bit because it was really bad with fire scale. But we've hammered these. And I really haven't done much manipulation, but I want you to see right there, nine and a half, just exactly what we wanted. What happened is as I was hammering this, it got to about there, about nine and a quarter, and I was able to hammer it down and stretch it the rest of the way. And the same one, same ring size, there we are, 
right at nine and a half, but it started with a different length of shank. And that's really the point, is you need to consider the thickness of your material so that the inside of the ring is the same size through that calculation of adding 2x, not 3x, uh, your metal thickness to the, the shank length.